Welcome back everyone, Sheepdog Smokey here. Uh, for those of you who have been watching for a while, I am testing a new audio setting on my recording software. I've gone to a zero decibel instead of uh, going to a minus five or minus seven. Uh, as I've been uh, told, it may be a better experience, it may be better quality. So definitely let me know if this is better or worse or the same as the audio you've been experiencing on previous videos. That said, let's go on and dive into this one for tonight. Concealing guns is not safe for the public. Uh, this one, honestly, is the same mantra as every gun control story and study and argument is. The argument is very simple that you don't need a gun. Give up your gun. I'm, I'm threatened by your gun, so I'm going to turn you in. Why do you want a gun? It's on and on and on with just irresponsible and, quite frankly, unintelligent rhetoric. You need to only Google one of a million different search terms. Good guy with a gun. Concealed carrier prevents crime. Whatever you may want to. And you'll find that while, yes, there are irresponsible people who carry in stupid ways and either misfire or drop their firearm or whatnot, for crying out loud, we have video of, I believe it was a police officer, but I know it was someone who was not just a CCH permit holder, uh, concealed carry permit holder, but they tried to do a backflip in a nightclub and their firearm fell out of its holster and fired. One, if you're at a nightclub and you're not the official security, don't carry because you're going to likely imbibe alcoholic beverages. You do not do that while carrying. Two, if you pocket carry, you need to be aware of that. What articles like this rarely, if ever, discuss is that it's not just police officers who train with their firearm. I go to the range as often as time and money allows me to, and I train with my firearm. I seek out instructors who can look at where I prefer to carry, be it appendix, small of the back, shoulder holster, belt on the right side open, versus concealed. They they go over the benefits and the drawbacks of each concealed carry position, and we train with it. I've been to classes where I'm specifically told, do not bring your firearm on day one, and we work with the rubber guns that they use in some police training, where this is literally, and I do apologize, as I've said before, I'm getting over a sty, but this is the same type of training that law enforcement officers and private security officers go through. It's a hunk of rubber that you can use as an analog, and they will have you draw it multiple times and get on target multiple times. And they'll time you, and they'll tell you, you need to be aware of clothing and so on. And I have done this extensively for one simple reason. I carry my firearm not only for my own safety, but so that I can if need be, stop a criminal from committing their crime. Now, I can tell you, if I see someone at a restaurant, retail establishment, whatnot, and it is a so-called simple robbery where they're not acting like they're about to fire and the registered person is cooperating and they're handing the money, I'm going to get a good look at them and I'm going to remain calm and I'm going to let them leave. This is the same thing I was taught when I worked in retail, when I worked in food service, when I worked in hospitality. Any customer-facing job, you are told nothing in this business is worth the life of any person at all. If they walk in and ask for the contents of the safe and you're able to open the safe, do so. Every business on the planet virtually has video surveillance. That video is going to allow the police evidence and they'll move on from there. I would only act to defend life. I'm not going to draw my firearm and demand someone be on, get on the ground and all that over cash. Because honestly, as long as the employees are taught right, that cooperate. Get them out of the, out of the business as quick as possible. That's the right way to handle it. Police act differently and they're trained differently. And here's what this article does not tell you. When you go for your concealed carry license, there's a lot of literature you're given. You are encouraged to seek out regular training. 
In my state, I'm required to attend an eight-hour-long course on legalities and so on of using my firearm to defend myself or others. It's not just, okay, give me the form, here's your license. There's more to it. And even with respect to constitutional carry states where if you're legally allowed to purchase a firearm, you may legally carry that firearm, concealed or not, people who do, by and large, and I would bet 90 to 95 to 97 and a half percent, regularly train, not just for marksmanship to know that they can hit their target, but also to make sure that they properly carry and they properly maintain. They can draw the weapon safely and get on target and so on. This article ignores all of that, not to mention the blatant hyperbole brought in, where you can see that if someone enters a restaurant, store, or theater and sees people hand carrying handguns, rifles, or Uzis, he or she can wisely grab their children and leave. One, I don't know of anyone who walks around unless they're making a statement carrying a long gun. I take my rifle either to where I'm going to hunt or where I'm going to compete or a range where I can practice for said competitions. That's it. It stays in my safe the rest of the time. The only time I bring it out at home is when I'm preparing to go to a range or to a hunting lease or when I've returned and I need to clean it. No one, and I repeat this, no one walks around with an Uzi who isn't a gang member <clears throat> Pardon me. It's just, it's hyperbole, it is straw man, and it is meant to inflame the rhetoric so that you're scared for your life. They might have an Uzi. There's also the claim here in the second to last, pa last paragraph you see on the screen. The National Rifle Association claims that criminals are deterred when good people carry weapons, but how they, can they be deterred when the guns are hidden? And it's very simple. The question might someone here be armed? Why do you think that people typically attack and rob or attack just to attack places where they see signs that prohibit others from legally carrying a firearm? If you know for a fact that your intended target is unarmed, criminals go there. If there is the question, someone might be armed here, criminals, at least those who are not just psychotic or sociopathic, those who are just there to rob, they're typically going to say, I don't want to take the chance, because if someone may be armed, they could be arrested or worse. And that simple question does, in fact, work. I worked for about a year as a detention officer. Uh, and granted, this was a county uh, detention facility, so we didn't have the hardcore criminals. We had bad checks and such like that, but I did talk to the people that I was supervising. I mean, when you work eight hours a day with a half hour for lunch and you're sitting on a tank, you're going to talk to folks and they're going to want to talk to you because honestly, conversation is more entertaining than the same old crap on TV every day or talking to the same people every day. They're going to tell you, for those who did come to, to the, that detention facility, for something where they did break the law more than just tickets or whatnot, they will tell you that if they know their intended victim is unarmed, they are emboldened. If there is a question that the victim may fight back, they tend to question those actions and they may look for somewhere else to commit their crimes. The, the plain and simple fact of this that Jay Lynch does not address and does not even mention is that concealed carry permit holders save lives. The good guy with a gun story doesn't get media attention because the media thinks like Jay. The media thinks like the Democrats. The media thinks like hardcore liberals, that the rank-and-file citizen should be forcibly disarmed. I've seen several stories in the last month where people will comment, we're going to take your guns. They're going to come into your home and make you give them up. If you don't give them up, I want you dead. I have seen those comments, and it is more prevalent than you think. The media version where, oh, it's just assault rifles, which the AR-15 is not one, 
Oh, it's just assault weapons. Well, those are already all but impossible to get. It's candy-coated to make you believe if you just give up this one thing, they will leave you alone. But they won't. Because when giving up that one thing has zero effect or makes things worse, they'll come for more and more and more until we're living in a state like Venezuela is living now where the citizenry has been disarmed and a tyrant has taken power. I'm not going to tell anyone that you must go buy a gun or you must go get a permit or you must carry. I'm not going to because that is a decision you must make. I'm going to tell you that your decision that guns as an inanimate object are just evil and transmits demons from the soul from the pits of hell into my body just because of that ignorance i'm not going to let you decide for me and that is the long and short of it but i've talked long enough let me know what you think remember keep the comments civil we don't learn from argument we learn from debate as always, please remember to like and share this video as well as to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you're among the first to know of all new content as it is posted. Until next time, everyone have a wonderful day.